my PhD thesis is on the interplay between users' emotions and trust in technology. So I will be dealing with these this few topics within the next <coughs> 10 minutes. I'm sure I'm short already. <laughs> OK. So well, as technology evolves, um, it's adapting to users every day. Today, I can make calls without really bringing out my phone. I could simply say, hey, Google, please call mommy. Hey, Google, tell mommy I'm on my way, I'm running late. So technology is fast evolving, and it's, it's fast evolving and uh, really adapting to uh, users. Uh, uh, for example, running errands for users, even learning users' behavior. I mean, it was very interesting sitting here listening to all the new technologies that are going to be created over time. As you see here, I listen to the guy who's going to create a job system, which is going to have an AI to understand people's emotion and also give feedback, help them to make decisions. These are quite interesting topics I listed today. How, uh, however, as, they, as this technology is evolving and exhibits all these uh, behaviors, um, it's now becoming human-like. So you can imagine my phone in my pocket. I say, hey, Google, please call my mom. It's calling my mom. Okay. Imagine tomorrow I need some information about certain things going on. I mean, Google itself can remember the, what I did on this date 13 years ago. So I just say, hey, Google, what did I do on this date? So with my profile, is able to go back to my history and check all these things up. So it's learning not just my behavior, it's also supporting me, adapting to, I mean, looking more human-like. Typical examples of this technology, I will just pick few, intelligent personal assistants. I've mentioned Google Assistant over and over. We know uh, Apple Siri, those of us who use iPhone. Uh, however, the adoption rate of these technologies appears to be low, as Cohen opines. And, um, for example, a survey was done by Factor One. It's a technology survey company, and they figure out that 98% of iPhone users, only 38% basically use frequently, and the rest, 62, they rarely or almost don't even use at all. Well, researchers suggest that uh, probably it's due to the lack of user experience studies. Some suggest that uh, there is need to foster trust between users and these technology, taking into account privacy and security issues that these technologies also pertain to users. Um, however, from our own perspective, we believe that trust is very important to take into account. and. Um, as it supports users' decision and also helps to predict users' behavior um, when, in, when uh, faced with different technology. So um, trust has been shown also to be a very key aspect that influences the frequency and kind of users of technology. It uh, also, however, we found from previous research in a different domain from Paul Ekman and others that uh, emotions are also very, very important and they play a significant role in uh, the meaningful decisions that humans make. So uh, we therefore think that probably emotion could be something that influences their thrust and uh, when this trust is influenced, then probably this might be what is responsible for the low adoption. So this is where we hypothesize from or where we start building from. Well, uh, we uh, try to look at what has been done. So as I told, actually clamors a lot for the need to foster trust between users and technology, uh, considering it as a relationship between two parties. And um, my, as far as 1995, has most, mostly uh, pointed at two factors in enhancing uh, the adoption of these human-like technologies. It talked about uh, fostering trust between the user and as well as uh, enhancing the infallibility of AI. But however, we know AI is not infallible, so it's definitely going to fail at some point, and how people react towards this experience is something worth looking into. However, uh, with this... Um, Works already done. We have some prior research efforts in these human-like technology contexts, like Yoxel, who basically considered the uh, the overall intelligence, competence, and the physical appearance of this technology, trying to examine the trade-off to see if this is what is responsible for the trust. And uh, I mean, if this is what is responsible for trust variation, and this is what is responsible probably for the low adoption. We also have. Um, Tripitol, who has taken a social psychological perspective where he assigns administrators questionnaires to understand people's trust in these kinds of technologies. But however, in these two research, we do not find them taking into account the uh, emotional effect. And this is something that attracts our interest. Well, 
why we think emotion has a link with trust is uh, that if you look at the works of uh, Mark Alista, she thinks trust is both cognitive and affective. And when, what she means by this is that she thinks that trust as cognitive, will, I mean, as affective will mean that, will mean the first impression that a user gets when, user te when they see a technology or when they use a technology. And when it's cognitive, then it's based on experience. People use their uh, cognitive processes to examine this technology. Can I, based on different indicators in their mind, can I really trust this thing or not? And uh, we also have the works of, um, we, we also have uh, the works of Kramer and McKnight and Shivney, which conceptualize trust as behavior. And the technology acceptance model suggests that, of course, there is a link between behavior and emotion. And that's why we think also that emotion could have a role to play with users' trust and which might have an overall effect on the adoption of this technology. So um, we've done a scoping review already in the past one year and uh, during the scoping review around 181 articles were screened 21 articles were analyzed and uh, although I, I know there's no space to put all of those things but i thought of just sharing all of that so uh, 21 articles analyzed we figured out that uh, from methodological perspective um well i'm going to talk about those results down the line as well so we have some few results here, uh, like uh, Pellet who studied uh, the in the influence of uh, way of e-commerce colors on users' emotion and how that affects users' trust. So we've seen those kind of results in the past. We've also seen uh, results from Pengate and Sarati on website design, where they use the, uh, the Norman uh, emotion design theory to understand different emotional design cues in a website and how these affect the user's trust in the technology as well. Website, and then we have also seen online transaction Tesla, which is very interesting. Basically what Tesla, do, what Tesla basically did was um, induce participants into various emotional states and then uh, ask them to use a new technology. But the, 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 the technology is still a kind of electronic commerce system, but they had a new payment method. And depending on the emotion they experience, they want to see if emotion will influence people to use a new payment method or not. But however, we do not see any prior work in these kinds of technology after the review. So therefore, the challenge this research intend to take is uh, investigating the relationship between users' emotion and trust, behavior, and intention as well as belief, uh, getting uh, both physiological evidence and psychometric evidence. Let me quickly share a little light on this. When we are going to be using physiological evidence, we'll be using uh, data from our participants. Uh, uh, that's basically their brain states. We're going to be using an, 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 electron, an electroencephalogram uh, system to capture participants' brain states and then we are going to evaluate their trust decision using uh, a method called event-related potential analysis and can also do some sort of time frequency analysis to see the dynamics of trust on that different emotional episode. And then we are also going to be using a psychometric tool. We have a trust scale currently developed in our lab for understanding trust, belief in technology. So we're going to be administering this tool as well to understand this belief aspect of it and then we also have a, a self-reporting tool for emotion assessment developed at the Geneva School of Affective Science called a GW version 2. It basically assesses the participants' emotional states as well as the arousal level. So it basically classifies emotion on valence and arousal scale. We're going to use all of that to understand this relationship and um, our research question still remains one. Um, how does users' emotions interplay with users' trust, intention, behavior, and belief when interacting with technology that exhibit human-like characteristics? We just have two hypotheses for now. We hope they will change with time. We don't know yet. So we believe somehow for now that negative emotions, high or low arousal, will have negative effect on users' trust, intention, behavior, and belief in human-like technology. Why positive emotions somehow will have positive effect on users' trust, intention, behavior, and belief in human-like technology. Then um, the methodology we propose to use is nothing but a strictly controlled experiment. So uh, we, we propose to do a strictly controlled experiment. In the beginning, we run two experiments. The first experiment, we, we will take uh, emotion from the, uh, from, the, from the conceptual point of view that uh, emotion related, that is when we talk about integral emotion, we're referring to emotion that arises when you're using a technology. So if you're using your phone and it's not working properly, sometimes you get frustrated, sometimes you get angry. So that's actually an integral emotion by source. So we're going to focus on integral emotion and how it affects your trust and your 
usage frequency, behavior, and belief in this technology. And then that's the first study. And then the second study, we are going to do uh, a study focusing on incidental emotion, where emotion does not relate to the interaction context. So we basically induce participants using some uh, well-tested uh, emotion elicitation techniques. We have video, pictures, and all those things already available. Um, then we ask participants to use this uh, to get into our context of our experiment and we see what happens as well. Depending on what we get from both of it, the future of this research will be dictated from that. Okay, so in both experiments, we are basically going to be answering or using the same research question, same hypothesis. Uh, we're going to be using a particular technology, Google Assistance. And uh, the scenario where we're going to be setting up this experiment is going to be a gaming scenario. The game has been developed already in the past one year. We uh, developed a game following this popular who wants to be a millionaire context in order to create risk and assess participant trust in real time. And then uh, data collection instrument I've described initially, we're going to be using both psychometric and physiological instrument. For now, we will be using the electroencephalogram uh, uh, tool, but later we might use heart rate and uh, skin conductance and muscle and all of this other peripheral physiology to see if we can find some other evidence in that regard. Um, as an outcome, well, we hope to develop a conceptual map of various emotions and its relationship with users' trust levels in these technologies. Uh, the aim is basically to elicit and inform HCR researchers, designers, and developers on the importance of this relationship on the adoption of these technologies. And then also it would give us some sort of insight on the potential of the use of uh, these uh, bio, uh, bio let's call it bio cybernet bio cybernetic loop or biofeedback system to uh, adapt these technologies in a way that uh, your, your physiological state will be taken into account when you interact with these technologies and it will be able to understand your emotion and your trust levels in real time. But for now <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, future work we hope to other, also look at other human-like technologies. We are seeing vehicles today taking the place. Vehicles becoming driverless very soon. We, don't need, we might not need a driver. So we might send our vehicle to go somewhere, pick our kid, and bring them home for us. So we might look at, we might look at all that technology context in the future. We'll also look at cultural perception. Culture is another very important factor. We are not saying that because we think emotion does have effect on trust and we're investigating this, does not mean that other factors might not be in place. So we might also look at the connection between culture and emotion and trust. This might also be something to look into. And uh, design guidelines, of course. No matter what we find, there will be needs to put further coming up with design guidelines for people who are going to be building these sort of systems to understand these factors and try to build for them as well. So, in conclusion, we have basically described nothing but a new era in understanding uh, uh, the ways of sustaining the present and future technology. So, um, through uh, diving deep into an understanding of how emotion does relate with users' trust. And uh, if this comes out fine and hopefully we get something, we hope that this creates a new challenge. And uh, thank you.